Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Springboks versus Wales and the Springboks season is finally going to get underway tomorrow afternoon. It is the Qatar Airways Cup, that prestigious trophy that we added to our cabinet last year when we defeated England at Twickenham. And we are back at Twickenham for the second iteration of the trophy, which will see us take on Wales also at Twickenham. We will have a man on the ground, by the way. If you are going, make sure you keep an eye out for Dan the Man, Mr. Dan Skultz, who will be on the ground and uh, bringing you guys all the coverage of that site. So uh, keep an eye out for him. And uh, if you do see him, go say hi. Uh, always nice to do a bumper to people who watch the channel and stuff like that. But today we'll be talking about the two teams which are depleted because of uh, the game being outside of the international window. A very experimental side from Warren Gatland. Um, a little bit of an experimental side from South Africa, not too much. There's still plenty of experience in that Evan Edsberg has more caps in uh, to his name than the entire world pack. So, you know, certainly can't use the excuse tomorrow that we're not an experienced side because we are far more experienced than the Welsh side. But there are some nice new faces, four uncapped players in the Springbok 23. Um, I think it's about five or five uncapped players just on the bench on the Welsh side. So it's the game I expect the Springboks to win and to be pretty dominant um, at, in during, to be honest. You know, it's a Welsh side which is struggling anyway. Uh, they were the wooden spoon winners during the Six Nations. Um, very much pressing reset and now looking to build towards the 2027 World Cup. Warren Gatlin basically just sort of clearing everybody out and saying, right, this is now the start of that journey. So it'll be interesting to see um, how that team does fare. Uh, for the Springboks, it's the last opportunity to blood a few players and to get players aligned before Ireland because the next game we will play will be in two weeks tomorrow's time um, at Loftus against Ireland. By the way, Loftus will be sold out tomorrow for that Bulls versus Glasgow clash. So make sure you come and tune in for the watch long of that as well. Expecting it to be a really, really cool afternoon of rugby. Let's have a look at the side, shall we? We'll start with the Spring Mox. And uh, it is that World Cup winning front row. Uh, well, Malcolm Mox um, didn't play a lot of the last World Cup. He played a massive role in the 2019 World Cup. Um, but uh, Oxen Chair, what a player he has become. And just so, so strong in that front row. Next to Malcolm Mox and Vincent Koch. It was set to be France Mojova starting for in the number three jersey. But... When uh, Rassi Rass was found out that it was going to be Vincent Cox's uh, uh, 50th game. In fact, Franz Herbert himself said not happening. He definitely has to start. And that is kind of the uh, the, the culture within the, the Spring Mox at the moment. Is that they always try to give the player a start on their 50th appearance. And uh, that's going to be no different tomorrow. In the second row. So much experience. Basically, about 200 casts between them in the forms of Franklin Moss and Quackers. And sorry, Quackers, but and Evan Etzebeth. Etzebeth, the Centurion tomorrow for the Spring Marks. One of the best locks of all time, it has to be said these days. British and Irish Lions winner, double World Cup winner, um, you know, World Player of the Year nominee, Spring Mark, SA Player of the Year, two time, I think, SA Player of the Year. Uh, one of the greats. And Franklin Moss is one of the great underrated players was superb for the box last year during the World Cup. A very exciting back row. Quaka Smith, for me, one of the best impact players and players on the ground uh, in World Rugby. Next to Pierre Steph Toy, who will captain this side as well. The second time he captained, and the first time he captained, he lost uh, to Wales in Washington. So another neutral venue, the same opposition, and uh, he'll definitely be wanting to put that uh, the scars of that Washington defeat behind him and lead his side to victory. Evan Ruth gets an opportunity, an early opportunity to have a go at the number eight jersey, which Jasper Visa would be fancying if it were not. First of all, he wouldn't be available anyway tomorrow, but is also suspended at the moment due to serving a ban for a red card. Um, it'll be interesting to see the likes of, for example, Cameron Harnikomi would like to come in and give a go at that number eight jersey, for example. A Pepsi Lazy in the squad as well will be eyeing up the number eight jersey. So the, the competition for three mark eight is going to be a lot of fun. Fafta Clerk next to the big surprise selection, Jordan Hendrickson. As the week has gone on, people have become, I think, a bit more excited about his inclusion. I did a video yesterday talking about, was it Wednesday maybe, talking about why I believe he could be the perfect Springbok number 10. And a lot of people are starting to see some stats floating up from the last season, the last couple of seasons, and um, are starting to understand what the Springboks see in him. And uh, I think he's in for a potential crack of a game. Very excited about him. The back three will be Makazola Mpimpi providing experience. Apele Fatsi gets another go in the number 15 jersey. Edwell van der will make his debut in that 14 jersey. Big news that Kirtley Orensa is fit for the Bulls and therefore will be fit for the Lions. Could we yet potentially see uh, that scrum cap duo uh, continue for the Springboks? But yet, if Chisholm Colby doesn't uh, make it to the Lions series, could we maybe see... Edel van der Merwe, partnering Kurt Lee Aronsa. He's got an opportunity to put himself in the selection frame tomorrow. Off the bench, 
a mix of experience and youth. Bongi Manambi, France Maher, but all the experience. And they'll have Intutuka Unu, the youngster, um, alongside them when they go onto the field. Uh, a future potential Springbok captain is what he's been touted at. Not played as many games as he probably would have liked, has Salman Rat for the Springboks due to injury. Gets another go tomorrow, as does his teammate on debut, Ben Jason Dixon. The heir to be, potentially, the heir apparent for Pierce Jeff to toy. Plays the game in a very similar mold and great work rate. And I think, you know, made to play for the Springboks. Grant Williams, Sasha Femi Gomez Dooley, and Damien Delaney. Sasha Femi Gomez Dooley, the final potential debut for tomorrow. And he'll have the experience of Grant Williams, who is maybe still young. And it's still uh, new to play for Springbok Rugby, but it is a World Cup winner. And then Damien Delendi potentially inside of him. Maybe he does come at 10 or ask the likes of an Abel Fund, I mean, a Maximum Pimpy next to him if he does go into 15. Could he maybe have a Jason Creel or Delendi outside of him if he comes in at centre? So very exciting to see how he will go. In terms of this Welsh side, they will be captained by Dewey Lake. There's a brilliant photo of Malcolm Marks and Dewey Lake. Uh, well, Malcolm Marks pointed during Lake saying, come, let's go from the last time these two faced each other. So expect to see a very heated battle between the two hookers. Gareth Thomas um, was supposed to partner Henry Thomas. There has been a late withdrawal. So apologies for the graphic not being up to date there. Henry Thomas has been ruled out of the clash. And uh, as a result, Kieran Azarati will start. Harry O'Connor will come onto the bench um, over there. In the second row, it'll be Matthew Screech and Ben Carter. Uh, Tame Plumtree, James Botham and Aaron Wainwright compete in that back row. Some exciting players. Um, Tame Plumtree, I think, for me, is a, is a player to really watch. Aaron Wainwright has been a, a consistent player in the Welsh setup in the last few years. Um, and uh, the number nine will be Ez Bevan, who will start and get his first ever cap for Wales. Um, he'll partner Sam Costello in that halfback pairing. Number 11 will be Rio Dyer. Liam Williams at 14. Mason Grady. At 12, Owen Watkins at 13, Cameron Winnett at 15, Mason Grady 1.96, about 112, 115 kgs. I think he might even be a bit more up against Andre Esterhaz. And what a clash in the midfield that is going to be Owen Watkins up against Jason Creel as well. 89 caps, sorry, 38 caps for Owen Watkins, Jason Creel 60 plus caps. It should be a really good battle there. I was very impressed with what I saw from Cameron Winnett in the Six Nations and uh, Liam Williams with 89 caps. We know the experience he does bring. Off the bench, it will be Evan Lloyd, Kenzie Matthias, Harry O'Connor, James Ratty, Mackenzie Martin, make his fourth uh, baby. By the way, James Ratty on debut there. Garrett Davies bringing a lot of experience off the bench. The uncapped Eddie James and Jacob Beetham will round out that bench for Eddie Jones. Given the inexperience, I expect this to be a reasonably dominant uh, game for the Supreme Box. However, Wales are a side um, which we battle to score points against sometimes. Uh, if you look at the last 10 games, five wins apiece for the two sides. They have been a bit of a bogey team in, in, in previous times, so very interesting to see how things will go um, for the Supreme Box. Let me know what your score predictions are down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you soon.